Hello from Javelin, we have Marcel Dirks from uh, Next Gen Municipal to thank today for this interesting case study. Um, it will involve a little bit of sheet metal, a little bit of um, a surfacing, quite a lot of configurations. And uh, actually, let me start by explaining what the problem is. He's using uh, the sheet metal to create a part, and uh, that was created using uh, a loft band. So you can see here, he started between this sketch to that sketch, and uh, that's, uh, that's the loft band. But now he needs to trim the sides. So uh, for that, he unfolded the part, and I just want to remind, I just wanted to remind you that when uh, when you unfold something like this, you're gonna select an edge as a fixed edge, even though here it says fixed face, and uh, that's pretty much it. So I'll show the trimming of uh, the two side edges. This is what he did, in fact, and if you're looking at the uh, the sketch that he used, it, it pretty much eliminates completely these uh, side edges. Unfortunately, this creates a big problem when he's trying to fold this uh, part back because none of the original edges is uh, available anymore. So, uh, when he's trying to fold this back, it's not going to work. Even if you select another edge, even if you select any of these edges, it's not going to work. So what we're going to try to do then is still cut this uh, using this procedure but leave a little bit of material uh, left on one side um, for uh, having that extra edge for folding back and we're going to create uh, the flat pattern pretty much in a completely different configuration so allow me to delete this uh, cut extrude and uh, I'm just going to use the original sketch as a reference or another sketch. So another sketch over here, select the original sketch, use the convert entities as you can see I'm getting this pretty much at the same level. The only thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this uh, line, free it from uh, the on-edge constraint, drag it up a bit and maybe put a, a little dimension between the two of them, let's say one, uh, one inch and use this new sketch for cutting. So let's cut into thickness and this is what you have. Now, and also allow me to hide the cut reference sketch, so I'm just gonna hide the sketch. That, just this little edge, it's enough to allow me to fold this part back, so let's collect all the bands and surprise, surprise my uh, metal part is formed back. Of course I have to remove this extra material here. You can do it a, uh, a few different ways. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna make a copy of this face. So let's go to the offset surfaces and do an offset zero, pretty much copying that surface. Just gonna hide the solid for a moment and um, extend this surface a little bit more, let's say about two inches. I can even show it's a different uh, body by changing this color. Let's make this one red, for example. Show the solid uh, body, and you can see I can either cut using the surface or just replace this face with this face. Um, I would say you guys should check which one is the fastest from the rebuild point of view. Uh, which uh, operation, which workflow is the fastest. In this case, I'm just going to use the replace face and uh, let me finish up by deleting the surface body since I don't need it anymore so this is my formed this is my formed configuration where everything is formed uh, when you try to, to flatten this uh, with a flat pattern you're gonna find out that it doesn't work the reason being the same you don't have the original edges so we're just gonna leave it like that as I said, I'm going to create a brand new configuration. Let me just rename this as uh, being the formed configuration. And uh, I'm going to change the color back to, to yellow. Okay. So uh, what would, is going to be different between this and the other one? Well, pretty much all these features, plus the fold, are going to be suppressed. So allow me to configure these features. 
and I'm gonna create another configuration that's probably flat and all of them are gonna be suppressed. Hit OK. So I'm gonna have now a flat configuration. Obviously in this one the flat pattern is gonna work, so let me just unsuppress it. Just gonna hide uh, the bend line and the bend box. The idea is to take the original cut reference sketch and make a copy of it on this one. I'm gonna do more than just make a copy, let me show you this. I'm gonna make a derived sketch, meaning I'm never gonna need to redimension or reconstrain that extra sketch internally. Uh, it's gonna be governed completely by the original, the parent sketch. So uh, let's uh, do that. I'm gonna select, let's say, this face and select the cut reference sketch, insert the derived sketch. And as you can see, placed it here somewhere. Let me hide the original now. And let's bring this one in position. So I'm gonna pick up this point, and I'm gonna pick up this point, apply coincident relation, and I'm gonna pick up this point, and let's hope I can pick up this one. Again, coincident. Uh, one thing I might need to do first before this works, let me just try to drag this over there a bit and try now coincident so it works and let's use this for a full cut so what do I have right now I have two configurations one is the form configuration one is the flat configuration and you can see here let me just show both trees how it works. It's a little bit of manual work. So, uh, in the flat, I have a completely different cutout than on the form one. But the two sketches are actually related in, in size and they're pretty much uh, going to the same uh, reference points in the solid for both of them. So let me switch to the form one now. And as you can see, everything works fine. So thanks again, uh, Marcel, and thanks, thanks a lot to everybody who watched this video. Thank you from Javelin, and have a good day.